met a gypsy. So I'm trying to think about where we should go next because there's so much I want to talk to you about. But uh, I guess like let's just go to New Mexico for a bit and just like maybe there's like mm-hmm. some a base here we can kind of uh, uncover a little yeah. bit. Like what was it like for you growing up? Because I mean, there's a lot of cool stories about Big Mike being like the man in the pits. Like if you wanted to go and have a beer yeah. and like have a laugh and a good time, then it's like you'd yeah. go to the the Anderson Pit in the amateur days. And it's like, yeah. I mean, all right, you got Eli Tomac and Jason Anderson. <laughs> like, that's like John Tomac, mountain bike legend, fucking grinderholic. His mum was an athlete. His brother's in the Air Force, like living in a ranch in Colorado, eating elk meat. And then you got Jason Anderson, New Mexico, Big Mike in the pits, offering everyone beers. Like, okay, yeah. I can see why there's a contrast in styles at, at the pro level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a product of your environment, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, d- growing up in New Mexico was really cool. Like I always grew up and I always felt like I was missing out a little bit because I saw all these guys at MTF. Eli ha- always had his own track at his house. And me and my dad would just literally go to the desert and just ride these tracks. Like we had this one place called the Gravel Pit and it was just yeah. some shitty desert track. And and I always tried to convince them into making me go to like, I, I saw them winter ams in Florida were huge with treadle and Barsha was at MTF. And I was like, I felt like I was missing out. But now that I look back on it, I'm so thankful that I didn't really do too much of that stuff because I think I was able to learn a lot, you know, just going to school and stuff like that. That was really cool. So I would say as far as my upbringing, I was kind of one of the more normal ones. I yeah. Mean, trust me, it's not fully normal. I mean, look at I was we we're all prodigies at eight years old, so you can't be completely normal. But they kept it, um, kept it, kept it real for the most part. And uh, yeah, my dad's always kept it real. He never like, dude, when I race and stuff, he was never hard on me. He would be like, <laughs> I do like get like 15th, and he'd be like, dude, that was sick, you know. <laughs> and then I had like my grandma, and grandpa, they'd be taking me around because my parents had to work. So my grandma, and grandpa would take me around, and it was cool, you know. It was um, we'd be going to races in California, leaving on Friday night, driving back Sunday night to get to school on Monday. So it was it was very uh, somewhat like kind of their very blue collar, you know, kind of a yeah, and that's that's something that i'm kind of proud of you know it's not like they came from it's not like they're john tomac you know world mountain bike champion or anything like that but my mom's a teacher my dad works on the railroad and they still keep it 100 right now so it's really really cool. yeah yeah and i think it explains a lot about like the way that you want to keep a close-knit crew and like that mm-hmm. you want to feel like you always have a family around you because i mean i'm from I guess similar background of like just both like super blue collar parents and like Mm -hmm. it was just tight like even to this day me and my brother like I do everything with my little brother and and I just I don't know another way to do things and like family and I think that in moto it's probably overlooked to a point that a lot of families break down like to get to the level that you got to in motocross like there's not that many families Mm. that are super tight and i think that's why you see guys that kind of have like the man friend and the agent and the like they kind of create like this little group around them because like family is not that important and it feels a little bit like everything feels businessy within the environment Mm -hmm. whereas whenever like it's around you it's real family it feels like there's a lot of like just like love banter you know yeah. but even though the harder the banter the deeper the love in a way but it's like it just yeah. feels like that's kind of your vibe like you have to have mm-hmm. that sort of family feel around you yeah yeah if i'm being honest like as far as like the family aspect goes with moto it gets real not good sometimes like i dude you see a lot of sad shit and you you, you probably know about a lot of it um yeah. and that sucks and I'm really, really thankful that my, me and my family, we're good. We love each other. Like, dude, to be honest, like a big reason, um, like this year, like I sold my home in Florida. I bought a home in New Mexico. I have a piece of property with a track and that's where I'll be practicing all summer just so it could be closer to, you know, my mom and dad and my grandpa. And we're just gonna, you know, kind of keep it real at home in New Mexico. You know, I like, I enjoy, um, 
you know, being able to be on the West Coast in California. And I think it was good for me to be close to the team. But I, I do want to do both, you know, and I have my property in New Mexico. Um, and I'd be closer to my family. My, my dad, he'll be over there grilling. He'll probably have his, <laughs> he has a fridge that has almost every single type of beer that he could find around <laughs> within a 20 mile radius. So it, it's, he's pretty funny, but he's, uh, he still, he loves dirt bikes too. So he's, uh, he's down with it. So it's, it's cool that, uh, we're able to keep it that way. And it's, it's and, not always the case with, oh dude no it's not the case uh, at all man and and i think like yeah mm. it's just got different effects you know like i think what it invites then like if you don't have a tight family and if you don't have like those family vibes like i even see people that um you know like their parents are divorced and they just look at relationships in mm. a completely different way you know so i just think like mm-hmm. when you come from that environment that you come from i think that it just like it bleeds into all of your life i think you look at like tomac you know like they've never even really yeah. gone outside of their family like talk about a tight-knit family yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah dude they it's, it's crazy because between kathy john and eli they those two have been a core group and what's what's really i think the one of the most impressive things about them is they stayed true you know what i'm saying like if eli never had sick if he had times where like he wasn't doing good or like you could tell like struggle was happening even in his light stays or whatever bro they never they always stuck to the plan and they kept they kept it between them you do i don't know very many people that know much about them you know and i grew up around eli and i i'm like i'm like i'm like I really wonder what the dynamic is like in that whole thing, but yeah. no matter what, I know you you know the main characters no matter what, but you have no idea what the storyline or the dynamic is in between that that family, but it's uh you know that that is a mystery that is honestly marketing for Eli, you know? That's oh. something that you will never know. And that's going to be kind of what he's known for. He was like a he's a secretive dude that you don't know much about, but he freaking rips on a dirt bike and you know like when he goes beast mode he'd be going beast mode <laughs> he's got some weird gear that none of us understand dude he ri- he rides a dirt bike so much different than i ever think of anyone riding a dirt bike he's it's crazy but hey he does it. i feel like i do it like a little more flowy and stuff like that he'd just be hammering that throttle <laughs> so it's uh, it's it's cool to watch um i hate getting beat by it but i'm trying to make it happen less nowadays dude the after daytona just a fanboy on eli for a little a little minute here yeah his 450 was fucked in 25 minutes oh yeah (laughs) i get two years out of a 450 he fucked one in 25 minutes and it's like someone uh i was watching i forget who i was watching the race with but like what's wrong with his bike i'm like eli tomac Eli Tomac is what's wrong yeah. with his bike. Like it's fucked because of him. He 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 went through a bike. In it's like some people go through set like they'll go through tear offs in a moto. They'll go through fucking a, a set of tires mm-hmm. in a moto. He went through an entire 450. That there's no one that I know that does that to a motorcycle. Yeah, dude, he's he's hard on those things. You can <laughs> hear it too. So it's it's crazy. I I love the 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 juxtaposition between you two like you guys you know for you guys are the best two guys that of this supercross series hands down and yeah the the juxtaposition between the way that you go about it i mean you've got your own fucking brand that's about your personality eli has mm-hmm. about as little personality as could like i mean not him personally like i'm sure he's a cool yeah. as fuck dude but in terms of like what he wants mm-hmm. to show people zero personality mm-hmm. he can he can fuck a dirt bike in 20 minutes you're like kind of flowy and cruisy and like you know the shirt's untucked it, it's just the most different styles ever the fact that you just grew up racing each other it's like for you to know mm-hmm. like how long have you known eli tomac probably 25 years you know nothing about the kid dude since i was eight like straight up since i was eight and i know i like when we were younger we used to kind of ride together but yeah we I really don't know much about him. I even like conversation. I don't think he has very many conversations with many guys on the line or anything like that. But 
I'm sure once you get on the inside, if you're in his group or whatever, he's probably really cool. You know, oh, it'd be he's the probably man. fun to hang out with and stuff. Yeah. And that's what sometimes it's kind of weird that you got to understand that like maybe you don't know a person and you're around them all the time and you yep. don't say a word to them. But realistically, you would probably like you would probably enjoy hanging out with them if you really got to know them, you know. So yeah. that's that's yeah. that's a weird aspect to our sport because the camaraderie is zero, you know, like I have guys <laughs> yeah. that I'm friends with, but like I'm friends with Dean. Um, I, I would trust Dean pretty much with telling him anything. Um, but past that, it's like I'm acquaintances with a lot of guys, but it's I don't think anyone is really like friends with guys. And it's funny, too, because you got like the husky guys are riding together but if one of the husky guys went to yamaha and started riding in tallahassee i'm sure the relationship between them would be gone like that you know (laughs) yes it would just disappear but it's just because they're riding together they see each other every day they like talk and hang out but it's kind of funny how that that dynamic is in our sport you know If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.